The crate weighs 20 pounds. Find the tensions in the supporting cables. The first step is always to draw the FBD. You want to know exactly what forces you have on your system and where they're acting. So in this case, we have the weight of the crate acting down. That would be 20 pounds. We have the t three tensions in the cables. One of them goes from D to A, one of them goes from D to B, and one of them goes from D to C. You also need to identify explicitly what those four points are. Make sure you know how to do this because it can be quite confusing which one goes where. A is at 4.503, B is at 1.500, C is at 0, 2.53, and D is at 1.5, 1.50. There isn't any shortcut. You have to be able to know how to write these down based on these various directions. Once you've done that, the next step is to express each of your forces in Cartesian form. Two of your forces are easy. B lies along the y-axis, so B is negative its magnitude times in the j-direction, and W points straight down, so your W force is minus 20k. The other two are not so easy. For forces given as a magnitude along a line, you want to use the position vector unit vector multiply. To find a position vector, you're going to do 2 minus from. So in this case, we're going to need 2a minus d and 2c minus d. We want to find the position vectors rad and rcd. rad is 4.5 minus 1.5 in the i direction, plus 0 minus 1.5 in the j direction, plus 3 minus 0 in the k direction. Stop right there. Is this in the right direction? Have we done 2 minus from, or have we messed up and done it the other way around? I'm going to have a positive i and a positive k and a negative j. Is it correct? Is rad, rad being the one that goes toward a, is this going in the negative y and positive k directions? Yeah, it is. So that makes some sense. Similarly, rcd is 0 minus 1.5i plus 2.5 minus 1.5j plus 3 minus 0k. Again, it's going to be going up, which means you're going to have a positive k, and you're, in this case, going in the negative i direction. So you have minus 1.5i plus 1j plus 3k. Those are your position vectors. You cannot just multiply by those magnitudes because they have magnitude greater than 1. You've got to go ahead and find a unit vector. To find a unit vector, we want to take each of the position vectors and divide by the magnitude of that position vector, whatever it is. Then we'll have something of length 1. So, for example, the, the length of RAD is going to be the square root of its magnitudes. So square root of 3 squared plus 1.5 squared plus 3 squared. In this particular example, you've got nice even numbers. This is 4.5. So the unit vector, UAD, is 3 over 4.5i minus 1.5 over 4.5j plus 3 over 4.5k. I just divided each of the pieces by its magnitude. Now I can multiply by its unknown. Now I can write A. A is whatever magnitude it is times this unit vector. 3 over 4.5i minus 1.5 over 4.5j plus 3 over 4.5k. Now I, that's the actual vector A. We found the position vector and the unit vector and multiplied it by the unknown magnitude. We have not increased the magnitude of A because the vector here is a unit vector. So the magnitude of this vector A will still be the magnitude of A because the unit vector does not have a magnitude. You want to do the same thing for RCD. To find UCD, this is 1.5 squared plus 1 squared plus 3 squared, which is, again, a nice number. This is 3.5. So the unit vector, take each of the position vector terms and divide by the magnitude. Minus 1.5 over 3.5i plus 1 over 3.5j plus 3 over 3.5k. So again, our vector c 
is its magnitude, whatever it is, times this unit vector. One, minus 1 1.5 over 4.5i plus 1 over 3.5j plus 3 over 3.5k. Now I have all of my vectors in Cartesian form. Don't forget these two. I've got this one, 1, 2, 3, and 4. You only have four on your free body diagram, so we know that that's all of the forces we have. Now we can write equilibrium. The equilibrium of a particle is given by the sum of the forces in each of the three directions being equal to zero. In this case, what I want to do is look at each of my four vectors here, one, two, three, and four, A, B, C, and W, and add up the I components and the J components and the K components and equal to zero. So in the, this case, for the I components, I have 3 over 4.5 for A, minus 1.5 over 3.5 for C, nothing for B, and nothing for W. That has to equal 0. In the Y direction, I'm going to have minus 1.5 over 4.5 A, that's the J component of A, now minus B, don't forget about B, plus 1 over 3.5 C, that has to equal 0. In the z direction, I have 3 over 4.5a, these are the k components, plus 3 over 3.5c, I didn't have a k component in b, and I have minus 20 equals 0. Don't forget about w either. I want to solve these three equations for my three unknowns. I can solve the sum of the forces in x in this case for a. a is going to be 4.5 over 3 times 1.5 over 3.5c, which is 9 fourteenths of C. This I want to plug into the sum of the forces in the Z direction. This gives me 3 over 4.5 times 9 14 of C, I've plugged in for A, plus 3 over 3.5 times C minus 20 equals 0. If you work that out, you have 3 sevenths plus 3 over 3.5 C equals 20, or C is 15.556 pounds. Now I know C, I have an actual number for C, I can plug it back into what I just found for A and solve, and I get A equals 10 pounds. Everything cancels out and that ends up being lovely. I can plug this A and this C, both of them, into the sum of the forces in the y direction to find B. If you plug those both into the sum of the forces in the y direction, you get minus 1.5 over 4.5 times 10, plus 1 over 3.5 times 15.556, that's C, e minus B, I left that out, equals 0. That is plugged right back into the sum of the forces in the y direction. You can solve that and you've got B equals 1.1111 pounds. Now I have actually answered all of my questions, I need to actually answer the question. I know all my unknowns, I've solved for everything, but I have to answer the question. The tensions in the cables are 10.0 pounds from D to A, 15.6 pounds from D to C, and 1.11 pounds from D to B. three significant digits and units, and you've specified exactly which directions you're talking about on the problem that we're given.